Hello, I'm Colleen Yates and I'm the CEO for Regional Development Australia Perth and welcome today to our show and we have Mark Paxavichis? Paskavichis. Paskavichis, uh, a researcher from Curtin University and um, he's done uh, quite a bit of work in looking at hydrogen. So Mark, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I work at Curtin University in the Hydrogen Storage Research Group and we look at storing hydrogen within materials. So we want to store hydrogen chemically uh, within a range of different materials um, to try and use um, those materials as a fuel tank for vehicles or as uh, storage in a fueling station and possibly even for exporting hydrogen. Brilliant. So uh, is the future as bright um, about hydrogen as everybody starting to talk about it? Yeah, I believe so. We're, uh, I mean, across the world, a lot of people are investing within hydrogen and there's a lot of growth in fueling stations and hydrogen vehicles. And especially in Japan and uh, Europe, they're developing a lot of this new technology. And yeah, I think it's really going somewhere. So what do you think is going to be one of the most significant changes as we move into using hydrogen? Is there like a design component or uh, if you're talking about storage, do, or do we need to look at this in a completely different way? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think everything is there now. We, hydrogen technology is here. We can buy it off the shelf. Um, it's a bit expensive now. So mm -hmm. one of the things that will happen as we go forward as things will become cheaper and that will come through uh, technological um, developments but also in um, large-scale production of some of this technology. So, I so, so what, what, why, why do you think it's so expensive currently? So some of the technologies require rare, rare metals oh. uh, that are quite expensive. Um, yeah, so a lot of research is being done to try and develop new materials that can perform just as, as well as these expensive metals mm. um, and drive down prices. You know. Um, Regional Development Australia, Perth, um, we've um, actually uh, just completed a study called Lithium Valley and one of the things that we found in that is the same thing about rare earths. There's a whole range of, of um, opportunities that exist through alloys and, and what could be developed out of uh, rare earths. So, um, and I think um, in Western Australia we've got uh, quite a resource in terms of being able to access that. So what, what, in, in terms of the rare earths, uh, what, are, what are some of the things that Curtin University is doing um, to look at that? Uh, yeah, so you're right. Uh, it's, it's a very similar problem mm -hmm. and we have to look at new types of materials um, and try and tune their properties, um, design materials in a different way to try and make them perform better. And yeah, some of the ways we can do that is uh, by yeah, purchasing uh, cheaper materials and um, structuring them different. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, altering their properties, but trying to perform the same task. Mm. Um, yeah, so at the moment, hydrogen can be stored in a gas tank, but uh, it takes up a very large volume. Um, so, you, so for things like trucks, you may need 3,000 litres mm. um, to, to store this hydrogen. Whereas if you can store it within materials, uh, it takes up a much lower volume, and then you can store more cargo, for instance. Um, so we're work, working towards trying to yeah, reduce the volume of storage. Wow. So what's the most exciting thing about your research that you have found? Lots of things. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. But um, one, of, one of the interesting things is we're using these hydrogen storage materials also as uh, thermal energy storage mm. material. So here we, we would couple a metal hydride with um, a concentrated solar thermal power plant and that way we can store a lot of heat energy and um, we're working on a project now to try and uh, develop like a large-scale system here where we can we can st um, store energy at seven or eight hundred degrees mm -hmm. and then resupply that at night time so oh, we can wow. get 24 7 power from the Sun using these metal hydrogen compounds that is absolutely fascinating. 
And so I'd like to say thank you, Mark, uh, for joining us for a really quick conversation. Thanks. And uh, to all of our viewers out there, please hit subscribe. Thank you. Mark, Colleen, absolutely fascinating listening about hygiene and so forth and developments going on. Uh, Mark, first from your point of view, what advantages do you think it's going to give West Australia with Curtin's research that they're doing right now into hydrogen? Having advantages for having hydrogen mm. in WA. Or, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we're trying to develop ways to store hydrogen. We also have groups working on new fuel cell technologies. So we're working at different avenues because we need the fuel cells to create um, electricity from the hydrogen, of course. Uh, so we hope to pair all of these things together and develop uh, sort of a single system that can work well in all sorts of vehicles. For, for someone who's not quite familiar with hydrogen and the lithium concepts, are they similar? Do they work together? What are the differences? Would you see the, the, the benefits? So they're very similar. Um, so lithium batteries create um, electrons or electricity and this can be used to power electric motors on a vehicle. Um, hydrogen can be used in a fuel cell which converts that chemical energy into electrical energy and that also runs an electric motor. So uh, we, we, both technologies would have electric motors in a car. Um, one, the hydrogen, you have to run through a fuel cell first and that can be uh, one of the most expensive components of the car unfortunately. And that's what we're trying to bring the cost down for as well. Yeah. Colleen, with Regional Development Australia, you're looking at, uh, and we seem to be uh, probably leading the world at the moment, if not leading, but one of the leaders in the world in both these technological areas. What's the fascination for Regional Development Australia, Perth, in supporting and, and, and promoting these technologies? Um, well, for us, uh, because our uh, mandate is around economic development, we want to try and create as much of that investment and job growth here in Western Australia. So we've got um, some really fantastic companies, some really great technology through the universities. And rather than um, uh, taking the innovation and exporting it, uh, we want to keep the innovation here in WA build the companies that then develop all the products around that innovation and then we can export that as product you know so it's 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 trying to look at um, how can we uh, maximize what we know and what we're creating um, for the f uh, future of, of WA it was interesting in that Colleen you, you mentioned jobs for WA and Mark in your research are you guys identifying career paths for people that this can create or jobs that this hydrogen uh, research can now create? Not in my research, no. We don't, we don't extend uh, to the wider um, job creation, I guess. That's um, for people like us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have to work together as a team, right? <laughs> um, so we can come up with some... Uh, new materials or new technologies uh, that can do certain things and then we need to uh, collaborate with businesses and companies that can uh, take these on and drive forward. Yeah. Is this where you come, I'm looking at your smile, you're going, magic, yeah. I love it. Yeah. This is where it comes, you, you get people like Mark and the research from Curtin and then the industry bodies and the in, in, in industry you talk to, you start to marry up and identify opportunities and where this can be exploited for WA. That's correct. Um, universities are moving more and more into um, being comfortable with commercialization, mm -hmm. um, though they're, they're not always quite there yet. Um, uh, but uh, uh, through uh, collaboration and working with organizations like ours, putting um, uh, universities in touch with those companies that then could create the products, um, which would then commercialize uh, the research, that, and that is where we're going to find a lot of benefit. Mark, a, a bit of a personal question. I guess a lot of people watch you now and go, how do you become a researcher in hydrogen technologies? What, what was your career? How did you get there? Yeah, so I fell into it, I guess. I, uh, I did a degree in physics, and yeah, as part of, as part of that, I did a project with energy storage and yeah got excited about renewable energy and I did a 
a PhD on, on hydrogen storage. And then I went abroad, lived in Denmark for a few years, um, learned, learned a lot more about chemistry and yeah, storing hydrogen and the, be the best ways to do it, developing technologies and came back a few years ago and yeah, here I am trying to drive it forward in WA. Yeah. Someone who wants to get into a career or make a research career, do you, do you advise them that they, they perhaps after doing their initial studies here should go overseas to get experience and then bring it back? I think that's a really good idea, yes. Um, I, don't, I don't think you have to, uh, I think it's um, you can of course study here but I think at some point um, as a researcher you should go abroad, you should learn some skills um, f uh, from other people you know and, and try and bring that back to Australia as well. Mm, because RDA Perth and yourself Colin you do that, I mean you've just done a, a trip overseas That's correct. To, to find new technologies and new ideas to bring them back here. Uh, you, you're an advocate for that type of uh, proactivity? Th that's correct and one of the great things that ha has come out of that is um, we're working with Dassault Systems and um, looking at bringing their digital manufacturing and advanced manufacturing techniques um, here um, into WA and um, marrying them up with uh, companies. For instance, we've got a fantastic uh, battery manufacturer in Bibber Lake. Um, you can watch on one of the shows. And um, basically, in order to grow his business, move him into advanced manufacturing. So um, yes, the technologies exist. Um, if we can bring them in and, and, and increase the capacity of our businesses here to meet the global demand and global market, um, then that's a win-win situation. Fantastic. Mark, Colleen, thanks for staying back. And Colleen, people watching YouTube must... Subscribe! <laughs>